Welcome to task Oscar 5006, preparing orthomosaic imagery. There is no quiz for this session, as I'm going to give you a homework assignment. For those following in the task guide, it's found on page 25. So this is uh, Oscar 5006, uh, preparing ortho mosaic image, utilizing ortho mosaic image processing software. Uh, a lot of words. Um, <clears throat> first thing, what is an ortho mosaic image? Um, I've got three key uh, parts to a definition of what makes an image. Uh, first, it's made by com <clears throat> combining a bunch of small images. Um, because of that, the image itself is really big um, and has a lot of detail and resolution. Um, and those two things in them of themselves uh, are something that you can do with, you know, a lot of different things in photography, you know, make panoramas. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever uh, done that on your phone where you uh, um, do the panorama mode and you hold it and you like turn and, and it, it's basically is taking a bunch of pictures and then putting them together. Um, but that's not an ortho mosaic because the last part of it is that the software that processes the ortho mosaic corrects the image, each one of them for things like lens distortion, the angle that the camera's at, the perspective it's being filmed at, uh, topographic relief, um, so changes in elevation uh, within uh, the surface that you're that you're photographing and things like that. So um, first, this is a uh, uh, part of a set of images that, that uh, I shot. Um, all of these samples I'm going to upload to the Google Drive in the classroom, uh, so you guys can uh, have a chance to run through the process yourself. Um, but you know, here is a segment of the 100 and however many images I did for the uh, uh, this specific project. Um, it's a bit like a puzzle piece. Um, however, unlike uh, a jigsaw puzzle, one of the characteristics of getting good photos for an earth and mosaic is that you need to have images that overlap each other. Um, and the, the flight software and, that we're going to use, drone, uh, drone Deploy, will help take care of that. Uh, but, so you've got to have a bunch of different images and they need to have a little bit of overlap. Now, uh, the second point, talking about its size and its detail. Um, this is an ortho I shot over at uh, uh, Western, Western Michigan University's engineering campus. Uh, you can see... Uh, this image um, is 378 inches by 293 inches. Um, so, you know, this is like movie screen size. Uh, you know, if you were to print it out, um, it's huge. Um, and if you look at this corner here where um, it says 100%, this is the detail that we're getting in this one little spot right where my mouse is. Whoops. So if you can see where my mouse is right here, you know, um, you can zoom all the way in so you can see the individual handicapped parking signs. You can see individual leaves on the tree, um, you know. So the amount of detail that you get from an ortho mosaic is huge. And that's one of the benefits to, um, to our customers is being able to take a large area um, and be able to provide uh, something that they could really zoom into to see uh, what's going on. You know, he talked about in the, the last video uh, about digital zoom versus optical zoom and how when he was talking about digital zoom, you know, you, you started to blow it up and you start to lose the, um, the, the, the actual detail because it, you know, the software's messing with it. So you can see a lot. Um, and now there's the, uh, the ortho rectified. 
uh, part of it. So on the left, um, I've got uh, an image from a construction site, Ortho. Um, you can see, uh, you can follow my mouse pointer right here on the right. You can see how you can see this part of the building over here. You can see the side of it from the perspective that the camera was not flying, you know, directly above the the building. It was off to the side a little bit. Now, when you move over to the right and what's called ortho rectified image, you can see that you don't see that um, that side of the building anymore. So what the software is doing is it's giving a true flattened view of bird's eye directly on top view of everything, no matter where you look on that image. Um, and the reason that that is helpful is that uh, you can use it to measure distances. You can use it for um, you know drilling into something uh, with good detail, so you can tell you know how it relates to other things from a, like a, a, a a horizontal distance. Um, so it squares everything up nice and clean. Uh, does that make sense to everybody so far? Or the sure. mosaic is uh, created from a whole bunch of images that overlap. Uh, they have a lot of detail and then they're corrected for perspective and, and other elements. Good to go? All righty. All right, so um, I did a sample. Um, just so you can kind of get a idea around um, how these are being done. Uh, this is just a quick overview of, of how Drone Deploy does uh, one of these. Um, Drone Deploy is a software that we use. And uh, what we're, as you get into the actual task of flying a pattern um, and using Drone Deploy, you'll go into this in more detail. But right now, this is just a quick overview to see what's happening. So um, the ortho mosaic that uh, we're gonna work on is this segment seg uh, segment of Kalamazoo River. Uh, right here, we've got a, a bend in the river. I've got some roadways, I've got some uh, buildings, but what we wanted to look at is this spot right here that has a uh, railroad track uh, running over the water. We wanna make sure that that's not uh, having flood damage is the scenario that I was uh, that I was thinking about. So um, in the uh, the drone to play app, you'll go ahead and you'll you'll uh, basically you kind of punch in draw a square of the area that you want to fly. Um, you, you can use if you see there's these uh, uh, three, six, eight control points around the, the side there, these big uh, circles. Um, you can take those and you can move them around and, and create all sorts of uh, specific polygon shapes that you want. Um, but you start by the uh, basically like a Google Earth view of uh, top down of what you're looking, what you're looking to, to make a map out of. Um, if you look over on the left side here, um, it's going to say it's this 1046 minutes. That's how long uh, it's going to take the drone to fly. Uh, we're covering 31 acres. At the end of the day, we're going to have uh, 176 images, and we're only going to have to use one battery. Um, and then this next line down, you can see 300. You can set the height of your uh, your image uh, or the height of your flight. Um, this little where it says 300 is a is a little slide bar. You can go up and down. Uh, we try to fly between 200 and 300 feet AGL. Uh, for these, the higher you go, the larger area you get in each individual photo. Uh, but there's a little bit less detail and the more overlap you want to have to make sure that you, uh, that, that everything is going to line together and be able to line up and, and see what you need. Uh, but you're going to take fewer photos because you're seeing a bigger area in each photo. The lower you go, you're gonna take more photos um, um, and they're closer. Uh, it's, uh, you know, so the, the height and the, the, that you fly at, also like if the weather isn't great, super clear, you may wanna fly a little lower. If it's bright sun, you can fly a little higher. Um, 
some of those considerations. But the lower the uh, lower altitude you go, uh, the more photos you're going to take um, because each photo takes in a smaller area. It makes sense so far. Okay, so uh, next I've got a video that's showing. This is a simulation that I had <coughs> play run um, of what it kind of looks like for um, the uh, the drone to fly. So I'm gonna play this. I hit the start flight in the center. You can see where it moves. Now this is sped up quite a bit. <laughs> um, uh, but you can follow the track that the, the, the drone is flying. Uh, if you are already, um, if you've already done work on CAP air crew, you might recognize this as a parallel track search. Um, this is one of the flight patterns that we use in, uh, in CAP, actually on the ground too. Uh, we try, you know, it's called mowing the lawn, going back and forth, trying to uh, keep everything nice and even and cover, uh, you know, every possible spot in that, in the area that you're flying. Uh, so while the drone is flying that pattern, every uh, like two seconds or three seconds or however many, uh, depending on your, your height, it's taking a photo at regular intervals. Um, I have something to say. Yeah. Um, the reason why my camera is turned off because it'll help me have a smoother connection. I just want you to know that just so you don't think I'm not here. No worries. Awesome. Thank you. So I'm going to play a part of this again. So as it's flying, um, you know, as it's going over, it's taking, you know, snap, 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 snap. Every couple of seconds, it's, it's taking pictures along this track. Um, if you look at the direction of the arrow that the drone's flying, um, you can see that um, it's keeping its nose uh, parallel to each other. Um, you don't want to keep trying like a 90 degree turn and a 90 degree turn and a 90 degree turn while you're flying these. Uh, just you want to keep your orientation of the images the same. Uh, so once it gets done, and I was going to pause this when it gets there. Ready and all right, now it's flying back to home. All right, this spot right here. Um, once the images are captured, uh, we've got to do something with them. They've got to be processed. So drone deploy, you can upload it from the app, um, which is this button right here, or you can do upload later, which means you can go to the drone, de drone deploy website and, um, you know, Upload it straight from your your camera's card. That's uh, excuse me, sir. That's with yeah. a paid. That's with a paid subscription to Drone Deploy, correct? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, they do have. We, a, a, we use Drone. A lot of us use Drone Deploy for the for to do what what we've just seen. But we but because we use the free version, we don't have this ability to upload. He would have to then use one of the other uh, ortho mosaic uh, type uh, yeah. things that, and yeah. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to confirm that you have to pay for that, unfortunately, guys. <laughs> yeah, now, I'm gonna I'm gonna say um, I've I've been kind of running a bunch of these different systems for stitching things together uh, through their paces, and Drone Deploy so far has some of the best um, software. For running this so i'm glad that we're going to be using it um in cap overall and yes. if you're practicing at home you know and trying to fly these things um you know the, just get some good stick time and things like that you can use microsoft ice which i'm going to show you here in a minute or some of the other um other different software packages but for cap we are going to be using drone deploy and cap will have um uh uas team logins for this that we'll be able to use on a mission. So, um, and the the process is pretty much the same as you go through any software. Um, it's pretty much uh, click, upload images, click, do your thing, click, I'm done, and you let the software drive. So, um, all right, now 
we've done all of the uh, um, the flights uh, that we're going to do. We've changed battery if we needed to, and now we uh, uh, we've come back. We've got our SD card uh, from the drone. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer those over to the unit laptop that we're on. And I made a little video here to show that process. We talked about this and I did a, a kind of a not a good job last month trying to talk you through this. So this is, hey, play. Oh, man. All right, well, let's do this then. We'll just play it from here. Can you guys see this already? Yep. Okay. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna create a new mission folder um, on the PC. You can follow the, the cursor on the screen with the little yellow thing, a little yellow circle around it. Now we're gonna create a new folder for that specific sortie. And every sortie is gonna have a name. And then we're gonna create a raw folder. Now, you just heard me say we're not gonna use raw images, right? And you're probably wondering why are we creating a raw folder? Uh, the raw folder in this instance means that these are the images that haven't been edited at all. Uh, they're just straight from the camera, so they're raw. Um, we're not shooting at raw. Uh, format because there may be a time when okay maybe this one got blown out and it's too bright so we got to darken it or something like that so uh it's called raw because it's it's straight from the the unit without any processing or editing happening to it all right so now we're gonna jump over to uh where the uh your uh sd card is select all of those images that are on the card. I'm gonna copy those, go back to the raw folder and paste and fast forward because it may take a minute. Yeah, so that one was uh, what, 115? Now what you're gonna wanna do is double click on those and uh, just take a minute to just scroll through, make sure that everything, you know, all the photos look uh, uh, decent exposure. You Nothing is like bright white, blown out, super bright. Nothing's like completely dark and black. Just want to kind of um, make sure everything is, is looking good. That just, just take a quick minute. But that is the process again for, our, for uh, pulling it from the SD card or the drone onto the laptop. Now for this session, I'm gonna walk us through creating an ortho mosaic using Microsoft Ice. I know not all of you are using Windows. I have your six, don't worry. So I think I've said it in, in the past, Microsoft has stopped accessing access to this wonderful program. They've stopped letting you download it. However, I have created an accessible folder for you to be able to download it, and it can be found at the top link. The second link is another program called Huggin. It is a cross-platform pro product that also creates orthomosaic photos. Those of you watching the video will have to write the links down. Those of you present, I will post the links in the chat at the end of the presentation. Once you've downloaded your file, install it on your computer and you can start playing with it. So I'm now gonna show you how easy it is to do an ortho mosaic using ice or, uh, sorry, 
the uh... again. My goodness, I, I keep calling it ice. I keep forgetting what it's actually called. Um, my brain just went for a walk. It's okay. a image image comp composite image, editor. Image composite. Thank you. Image composite uh, editor. 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 So those of, some of you may already even have it on your computers. Okay. Image Compositive Editor. Image Compositive Editor. There it is right there. So once you've installed it on your computer, you'll find it in the program in the start window, window menu under the letter I. Look for Image Composite Editor. You can also put it on your, on your desktop. But there it is there. When you load the program, you will enter a splash page that looks like this. Click on new panorama from images. A pop-up will appear asking for the files you, need, you wish to use. Navigate the file explorer pop-up until you get to the folder where your pictures are. Load the files into the program. Depending on how many photos you have, this may take a bit, so be patient. Just a little tip, at least in Windows, by clicking on the first photo, just click on it, scroll down, hold the shift key, and click on the last photo. They'll all appear in that file name fi uh, folder, and then when you click open, again, it will move. Just be patient. It's moving all of them into ICE right there as you do that and it'll do it all in one shot, okay? So once, once your pictures are here, you click on the next button, right up here in the corner. Wait for the program to do its thing. This could take up to half an hour or more. So again, be patient. It's stitching all of those pictures together. Once stitched together, it will look something like this. Now I only, this is actually only five pictures of the whole 143. This is five of them to do that. By using the slide bar at the top and by clicking and holding your mouse in the grid pattern, you can manipulate the picture until it's what you want it to look like. So you can make it bigger, smaller, move it around, so I've manipulated my picture to what I want my finished product to look like. So I click next. Now I want to crop my photo. I can either use the auto crop feature, which will automatically put the lines where, where it feels is best, or by using the slide bars right here and here and the slide bar to bring the bring it a bit larger or smaller to do it manually. When I'm done, I click the next button one more time. We're almost done. On this page, we adjust the image size to what we want. and the file format to the one we want to use. I like saving my orthos as a TIFF file, not as a JPEG. Why? Because of TIFF files are not compression adjusted. They are as close to raw as you can get. So if I have to manipulate that TIFF later, it's a lot easier to do than with the JPEG because the JPEG is going to be compressed. Okay, and that's, sorry, and that's where we change it right there. When you're done, you click the export to disk. A pop-up will appear and allow you to save it wherever you want. That's the quick version.
you'll notice there's when we went going through this, there were there were little things. I'm gonna let you play with that. This is really fun. I really had fun playing with ortho mosaics. I'll be honest. This is the funnest part of doing any of this. Any questions about creating an ortho mosaic using ICE or any other program? As I said, the other programs are going to work similar, right? You're going to have to fall. They may they may use different you know different ways of doing it, but that's how you do it in ICE. Okay. Question is nope. Huggin also a graphical interface? No. No. All it does is it just is it just stitches makes panoramas. That's all it does. Okay. So in order to complete the assignment, you obviously need pictures. So I'm giving you my pictures. I've put, I put the, uh, the pictures in this link here. And as long as you, you go there, you'll be able to find it. Again, for those of you watching the video, you may want to pause and write this down. For those of you present tonight, I'll be posting the link in the chat in a couple of seconds. So once you've completed your ortho mosaic, email it to me. There's my email address. Many of you already have it, so it's not going to be something new. For those of you watching the video, you may want to take this down. You will only receive task validation once I have seen your finished product. So I don't miss your email. Please ensure your subject line format is... Oscar dash five zero zero six assignment, comma, your cap ID number, comma, your last name. When that pops up, I've actually put my spam filter to make sure that as soon as it says zero O dash five zero zero six assignment, it will not, it won't accidentally go to my spam filter. It'll automatically be accepted in my, in my email box. Because of the, some of these pictures are going to get very big, depending on your computer and, and, and the compressions that you use. That's why, because I normally, uh, I normally have things blocked going to my spam filter that are huge. But in this case, if you use this format, you will get it through to me. As soon as I see it, I'll go in, I'll approve your, I'll approve your task. Any questions about the assignment? So far? Nope. Nope. 